All right. Hey, Space Coast. How are you today? Hi. This is Space Coast Eats, a delicious podcast. And I'm your host, Jesse. And with me is Darlene, my beautiful co-host with, with uh, Eat, Drink, Play, Brevard. And uh, again, the podcast that discusses food, wine, events here on the Space Coast. So sit back, relax, and uh, invite your friends. Here we are going live. Welcome, welcome, family. How are you today? Hey, Hello. how are you? Hi. Very good, very good. We've got a special guest in the audience before we get to all of the details with today's show. However, let's just welcome all of our regulars. Hey, guys, how are you? Hello. Again, Jesse, coming from you from the Space Coast Podcast Studios. And, uh, you know, kind of a gross day out, but I think, you know, we're making the best of it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're watching this, please share, comment. We love questions and comments. Yeah. And if you're listening to this after the fact on any of the many platforms that we are uh, hosted at, uh, well, welcome and thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, as always, on Thursdays at 5-ish. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be. 5-ish. Uh, we go live here on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, of course, come join us as we go live on Thursdays at 5. Hey, lots to go. We only got an hour. Let's, let's rock and roll. Yep. Let's uh, let's start, Darlene, um, with introduce, we're introducing, if I could spit that out, introducing mm -hmm. our beautiful guest. Um, beautiful he guy. he is the Fat Angel. The yeah. Fat and, Angel. And he, he's been a contributing uh, host here at the uh, on the network, Space Coast Podcast Network, uh, as a mi Mr. Josh podcast. I but have. Mr. Josh has gotten into some new things. He's got a new alias. He's got mm -hmm. a new uh, venture, which we th just think is fantastic. Uh, recently, uh, he was on the Three Twin Flavor uh, group, which we just really love. It's a great community. Uh, lots of you introduced me to that, by yeah, the way. I yeah. only joined because I saw you were very active on that on Facebook. Well, and I thought it was pretty cool. It's it and it's grows. And uh, thank you to Lynn and Susie who are the commanding admins for that group as well. So again, welcome. We to salute you. Yes, exactly. Welcome to Space Coast Seats, guys. Yep. Uh, Darlene, how you been? I've been pretty good. Yeah, I know, I know, and uh, and of course we're gonna have your uh, featured segment uh, later on in the program, yeah. so don't anybody go away for that. Absolutely. But we have something. She's got a, some goodies there. I know. Way. I was yeah. gonna. I know. Yeah. I was gonna segue into that. Um, yeah, go for yeah. it. T tell us. Tell us what's going on. This is brand new for us, by the way. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 Nice. We, we haven't done a, a giveaway before, um, <laughs> and clearly I haven't been on Space Coast Eats. I I want to say this is what my, maybe my seventh episode. I'd yeah. have to go back and count. Oh, that's about right. That's yeah. about right, yeah. about my seventh episode. But we thought it would be fun to do a giveaway in honor of what should be a Cinco de Mayo episode because Cinco de Mayo is Tuesday of next week. But um, in the current you know, circumstances, state of state is kind of more of a Cinco de Stinko cinco is de kind stinko. of what I have been calling it just based on kind of what's going on. Uh, not a lot of people are real. I didn't really find where anybody was doing anything on Tuesday and yeah. that, that might change with the governor's orders, but I, I really don't think there's going to be a lot of hoopla out there this year, but Cinco de Mayo is one of my favorite <laughs> holidays. If you want to call it a holiday, but it's, it's a celebration. Right. Um, I love Mexican food. It's one of my favorites. Margaritas, yep. totally one of my favorite drinks yep. for sure. So we thought we have to do something fun, just you know, just something fun. Okay, gotta br gotta bring some spirit into it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So this is the dealio because we've been kind of you know sharing that we were gonna have this little gift basket. Mm. Uh, it's got tequila in it. It's got um, yeah everything you need for a margarita. Yeah, so you can't see this in the picture or whatever, but it's got blue agave, Jose Cuervo, a special. A, speci a special, a special, a special, a special, yes. yes. <laughs> and then it's got the the Jose Cuervo margarita mix, yes. margarita mix, and then it's got some other goodies in here, even some hot, Chips and salsa. even some hot tamales. Ooh, hot Ooh, tamales. Hot. Yeah, clearly the candy, but that's yes, that's a Cinco de Mayo uh, in a basket. In a basket, it's a party Absolutely. in a basket, and, and there's chips, right? It's a little yeah. chips and salsa. Some chips and salsa, some some margarita glasses. Yes. Nice. So, how are people gonna qualify for that? So this is the qualification. Okay, let's hear this. All right, so get your pens and paper out because it's super complicated. <laughs> yes. Not. So um, all that we ask everyone to do, if you're listening, is to, if you would like um, the Space Coast Eats 
Facebook page, which you probably already do. And then also like the Eat, Drink, Play Brevard uh, Facebook page, which hopefully you do as well, which is uh, my Facebook page. And then just listen to our podcast. And then at the um, part where, you know, I talk about some of the fun things, my little segment, just name your favorite part of that segment. And at the end, we're just kind of, we're going to just draw names of whoever made the comment. And then we'll let you know. And you can pick up your basket. We'll exchange it if you want to do the self-isolation thing where you you pick it up six feet or what have you i delivered <laughs> at your door this will there be you a, go i don't a even contactless mind contactless contactless i totally turnover am, of the prize exactly i can just i can drop it off at <laughs> your front at your door store whatever store. makes you happy we'll we'll do that and make it happen and it's just something fun to do it's not um any big deal so we just thought it would be a fun thing to do here but at what, we, we, what we would like to do is perhaps continue this with mm-hmm. all of the themed holidays yeah. you know Great and idea. uh yeah. yeah you know so so maybe a mom uh a mother's, mother's day, day basket mm. father's day basket i would mm. say graduate basket but i'm not sure the technical edible that. arrangements i think a, i think a fourth of july one would be fun well yes. the fourth, yeah that's gonna be easy mm. you, you, know? have a, you have there's a holiday every month you're gonna be able to do something for these right. at least going into that stretch uh, yeah right yeah. now you make one up what's i think that? a going back to school basket for the mom mm. Ooh. Spa. What's that going to look like? Oh, yeah. B- a um, bunch of uh, vodka. Al- alcohol. Vodka. And yes. <laughs> That's awesome. A yeah. massage. Gift certificate to Vitacan. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Genevieve uh, has chimed in, says Massa is doing, Massa is doing uh, Cinco fun stuff, giveaways, fun specials, T-shirts. Excellent, excellent. Oh, nice. Thanks for sharing. So. Uh, and it's good to know that they'll be open. So she's letting us know. Well, they, they've been partially open with their drive through okay. and stuff like that. Uh, but let's talk about some of the big news uh, which i think is pretty exciting hopefully um even though there's some um, stipulations mm-hmm. the governor has rolled out a phase one mm-hmm. not including some southern counties yes but for the rest of us um uh there's some uh, stipulations regarding phase mm-hmm. one phase one has now included restaurants yes uh safe dis- safe distancing practices mm-hmm. of course so what that means is 25% capacity. Right. Okay, so they can't you know, fill up their whole restaurant, but they could certainly spread them out. Good news. Um, some of the other things, uh, and again, there's, there's some other uh, non-essential businesses that are now being opened up as well. So this all happened in like the last uh, 24 hours, I believe, yeah, right? five it, o'clock it, is when he announced it. So I, I'm gonna- Today or y- yes, yesterday? Yesterday. Yeah, so we're like 24 hours later, yeah. Yeah, my favorite part of the restaurant is the patio. Right. I was just going to mention that. Please. That that is totally my favorite part. I eat outside. That is my go to. Yeah. And right now we've had some nice weather. It's not I, I don't get hot really easily. So sure. it can be 110 degrees and I'm good with still Except sitting in outside. the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I still can do it. I can still do it. No, yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So that part is <laughs> that made me happy. Yeah. And, well, and a good point of what Darlene is, is making is that that 25 percent is about indoor capacity. Right. So. Anybody that can maximize their patio or their outdoor will be able, you're going to see places are going to get mm-hmm. real nifty about how they do that. And you'll have to social distance, but there's going to be an onus on outdoor. Mm-hmm. Anybody that has that, like grills, right. they're like, hey, this ain't so bad. You know, right. some places will maximize that. But that, I believe that 25 is not full capacity, but indoor capacity. So everybody is going to be able to maximize. I, I thought right. it was 50% patio, but oh, I could, be, ro- I I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, so, so don't quote patio. us on any of this. Yeah, but, don't. But the, Research this. But the yes. exciting part is that it's, it's, it's finally happening, though. Yes, yeah. yes. So we're, we're, we're getting some bereavement. We're getting, mm-hmm. you know, it's, again, and it's a trial thing. You know, of course, right. if there's a spike in, uh, you know, uh, an observable spike in, uh, in, in COVID transaction or, you know, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the right word. I don't want to say, uh, you know, the wrong word. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, if, if, if there's a lot of transmission of the COVID, of course we want to mitigate that. Right. I think we have. It looks like the data suggests that the ho- there, there are hard hit isolated places, which we've been able to mitigate. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the, the you know, we got to get back to work. We got we to, mm-hmm. you know, for our mental health, for, for our, our pocketbooks, we, we've, we've got to take the right measures. Again, calculated, very calculated. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, our governor has mentioned the word calculated and, 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 and responsible. So it's just a little bit at a time. Again, right. it's a, and, and if we need to pull back because, you know, an increase of, uh, of cases uh, start to spike, then, you know, we'll, we'll know that 
that is in fact a uh, contributing uh, and and you know uh, uh, a detail, and then we'll mm -hmm. just go back to what we've been doing, and and hopefully. I don't know. I don't know the whole answer, but I'm glad right. we could I at least. I don't think anybody knows the answer. I think right. it's it's we're trying to kind of figure it out and how we can try to. It's all about right. balance at this point, I think. Yeah, so bars are still closed. Six-foot yes. patio guidelines. Thank you for um, Thank you. chiming in, Genevieve. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So sweetie. Yeah, so bars are closed, uh, but restaurants with bars are going to be opening. Right. I mean, right. You, but it's 100% sales of, of liquor bars. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That that are going to be continue to be yeah. really right. close because it's really loophole will help. Yeah, it's really tough to, to to sit at a bar and be six feet of <laughs> you know apart. Right. Um, especially since the, the bartenders typically work in you know two feet away from you, mm -hmm. pretty much on the other side of the bar. Mm -hmm. And then um, a lot of busy bars, the patrons are smushed together. How many times are you doing the drink through people? Oh, off exactly. the tracks can't pull that off. Right. right. Mm -hmm. They'll probably be able to do you know their food service, but they can't pack that. Not to you know, single them out, but th right. that's a crowded place that you right. got to navigate through. You just can't distance in there. And mm -hmm. that typically right. runs with more of a nightclub type atmosphere right. where people are dancing or they they literally are packed in there and right. you, you can't even get a bar stool sometimes. The, were hours discussed? Because certainly if restaurants are mm -hmm. now allowing for indoor dining, but they're still, but still restaurants are still closing at eight or nine o'clock, that mm -hmm. there's really no bar atmosphere anyway. True. So that's not Is even, that a, it's a non-issue. the times? Is that I, I didn't hear that there was a clarification. I don't think that yeah. the times were discussed. I think that's probably up to the owner. I don't think he's going to get down and dirty on times. So for those that are, uh, again, just tuning in, welcome. This is Space Coast Eats. And if you have some uh, comments and mm -hmm. uh, if you do know some of these answers, please chime in. Yes. Again, we don't pretend to know anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly <laughs> not. Sometimes we get some things right, you know, so, so you know, uh, a, a broken clock is right twice a day, right? Yeah. So, right. Uh, so sometimes. We is that true? Sometimes we get lucky. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah. And I got one here, let, me, let, me, let me break your yeah, watch, please. and I, I promise break it'll... Break my watch. Let's do a, a <laughs> test. <laughs> we'll test it out here. Yes. Uh, so, Josh, you're in the studio with us. Um, again, we, we, we prefaced earlier that you had put in um, a, uh, a little bit of a story, a little bit of a caption with some with some pictures of, of what you were doing. You got some good responses. You even got some donations. So, let's... So, do you want... Yeah. Do you, so, where did this come from? Uh, so, how did this start? Well, and, and describe this. What have you been doing? I think I should take my glasses off for this one. <laughs> right. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um, so how did this start? Basically, yeah. it, it's pretty simple. I have some visuals, too, for this. Right. Um, the elementary schools give away uh, breakfast and lunches, a lot of reduced lunches for these kids in, mm -hmm. in the area. And with the kids being out of school, um, they have this abundancy right now of food mm -hmm. and cartons and of milk and all these things that they're – They've already bought. They're mm -hmm. sitting on this stuff, and it keeps coming in, and it's it's already been you know kind of allocated. And because the kids aren't going to school, um, it's kind of like, hey, come and get this stuff to the parents and, and the families. And some kids are, and a whole bunch aren't. And so they're pushing it on people. Mm -hmm. And so I have some family that um, went around and, and got this and feeding their the, the, the children and whatnot and some stuff. And my ex-wife gave a, a bunch of it to me and um i didn't eat it and my daughter didn't eat it and, I, and it was i saw it was going to go to waste and they were about to throw it away mm. and i said no 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 no, we can't do that i started thinking there's a lot of homeless here and it's a growing thing i'm noticing mm. and we can touch on that um and some of the things that i learned but with that i said i'll give it away mm. and so i started handing it out and everyone was very happy to take sure. it and whatnot so from there i parlayed that into the idea of well I've got waste in my pantry and in my freezer and refrigerator. Now I'm going to make food and hand mm -hmm. that out because I have no more of this stuff. So just to give you an idea, this is some of the things, applesauce. This is a sandwich of some sort that I give out. There's carrots. This is some of the school stuff that was going to go in the garbage. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I give a little example of even something I made. So I got these little things, and I'll explain that. And these are just little potatoes and all that. It's just it's food. So right. to give you an idea, um, bottom line is, I made some of my own stuff, and then that took on a thing, and that's when I did the post. Mm -hmm. So I go to three, two, one, br uh, flavor. Flavor, yeah. Okay, and it got such a rousing response. I mm. think over two hundred likes and hearts and thumbs sure. ups and all that, and a ton of, of comments and and pats on the back and God bless you and all that, which is great. I, I appreciated all that. 
one particular I have a, a, a few people in the works now helping going to donate oh good but one particular couple and, and I sent you some photos mm -hmm. they um, they came from Titusville to actually bring me a, a bunch of food Wow okay so that was the first people three bags of uh, energy bars and uh, um, fruits and uh, all sorts of stuff that they were not going to use and so that was a big help and then one gentleman um, I'll say his name was Nicholas and he I gave him full credit. He was cool with that. He asked me. Well, do you have a Venmo account? I said, of course I have a Venmo account. Who don't have a Venmo account? Mm. And uh, he said I'd like to uh, contribute. Mm. No problem. Give him my name. By the way, the, it is Mr. Josh W on Ven Venmo or and Cash App if anybody wants to donate to what I'm doing here and I'll get to the whole fat angel thing in a second. Right. So I wake up the next morning and Nicholas sent me a hundred dollars. Mm. I've been doing this for four days. Mm. And so to see the outpouring of what I got off of one post in four days, monetarily, emotionally, the pats on the back, and then actual donations right. was kind of overwhelming to me. So I'm handing this food out. I'm interviewing these people. I'm starting to tell people about it. And a close friend of mine who's a marketing guy and who's done very well for himself, he says, I said, I want to take this to the next level. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of, I want to turn this into a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And I thought of, I want to call it something similar to a charity. So I thought of food will. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants food will, now it's yours. <laughs> and he says, no, don't go with that. You may get sued, this and that. And I said, he said, do something more marketable about yourself. Why are you doing this? Right. So folks, here's another reason why I'm doing this other than I had the food. Because I am a fat guy who has <laughs> eaten when he wants, how he wants, where he wants, at any time he wants, and sometimes twice. Mm -hmm. Um how can I not help somebody who's starving? It's mm -hmm. like, I, it just dawned on me, like, especially in these times. So it was another driving force. Mm. And he said, there's your angle. You're an angel. It's an angel thing. You're bringing these people food. Right. And that's where I came up with the fat angel. Mm. And I think the people I give the food to think it's funny. Right. And I don't mind them laughing at me while I hand them the food. Sure. Oh, you're fat <laughs> angel, fat angel. And I tell them, tell them large Marge sent you. Right. Uh, no, but I tell them, I say, when they ask where you got this food, I'm going to be passing this out. Mm. You tell them that the fat angel is out here delivering food. Mm. All jokes aside, that's I'm le le legitimately doing that. <laughs> so that's where it all really comes from. I've gotten a lot of great responses. Right. I have people helping. I've done this every day since I've started, literally. I have more free time as COVID has affected my business and mm. businesses and things that I was doing to make money. So this has just become a thing, and that's really the, the backdrop. And I appreciate you putting me on here, you guys, right. because it is an interesting thing. And I can't lie, all, all, all jokes aside, I, I get a feeling from doing this now, like this has now become a purpose. Right. I can't really explain it. I never thought it would happen that way. I thought I could get rid of some stuff and be done with it. And now it's become... I don't want to call it a calling because I think that's going overboard a little bit. Sure. But I'm starting to feel like that's become a thing and I want to make this bigger and I'm getting a lot of feedback from these folks. So mm. to, just to open the floor back up to you guys, I neglected to say this. Every one of these folks is letting me interview them. Mm. And it's the food is not the requirement. They get the food anyways. And they all have allowed me to ask them some basic questions. Mm. Your name, your age, how did you get here? Why on the street? Basic stuff. And then I say, Say whatever you want. Here's a soundboard. People are going to see this. What's your skill? What do you do? Yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And um, I've learned some very interesting things. And they'll all be posted through my podcast. I can imagine. And you brought, right. and you brought with us some of these, um, of these examples. I mean, again, you, know, you yeah. brought, the, brought the physical food here today that you were, some of what I I mean, you, you were continuing the mission even today before the show. Yes. Uh, and then, let's see. Uh, just getting the right screen, folks. Bear with me. Uh, so what we're going to see is some of the people that you've been helping. Here's yeah. a, some examples of the food that, like you said, would just normally go to waste. Uh, so you're not taking it out of the mouths of, uh, of the school children or anything else. I mean, this is stuff that's uh, dumpster bound, yes. for, for lack of a better term. 100%. People need to understand that. I don't want people to go, you're taking this food from whatever. First of all, yeah. it's going in the mouths right. at the end of the day. You, you know act, I mean? he, he actually, when I was talking to him, he actually said, have you seen, you know, the the show Tiger King? Oh, right. Thank and you. And kind of talked about, you know, it's the similarities with what the waste was with Walmart and what the Tigers were yes. getting. It's, it's a similar. You. Yeah. I thought that, that was, was an interesting a, comparison. Was, I thought about that when I was doing this idea of he's getting Joe Exotic's getting all this meat from Walmart mm -hmm. and, and people didn't know. 
okay, expired meat, absolutely, it's got to come off the shelves. But if you grab that ground beef and bring it to the counter and you're like, whoa, seven ninety nine, no way. Mm. And they don't sell that anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you ex- same thing with restaurants, by the way, it's almost it's a legality issue. Right. If Taco Bell gives you the wrong food and you leave through it in your hands and you're this is all wrong, whatever, they have to throw that away. Mm. That's going in the garbage. Right. So people maybe don't know as soon as it's it's a legality thing. It's not that they're looking out for us thing, but <laughs> at the end of the day, uh-huh. um, there's a lot of waste as a result of that. Mm. And I started thinking, and I'm appealing to restaurants now while I'm on the air with this. Any restaurants that are willing to give their waste of any kind that is going in the garbage, if you're not already giving it to homeless, if you're not already giving it to a church, if it's going unclaimed, please get hold of you guys or me somehow, some way, and I will claim it and I will put it to use. Mm. These people have taken everything I give them. I never come back with food. Mm. They are happy and they're upbeat and they're surprisingly positive. Mm. And it's a lot of drugs and it's a lot of mental health why these people are on the street. Some of it is just even getting out of jail and they got nowhere to go. Two Mm. of the people, one was a prison, another guy today was jail, and he, for a suspended, driving on a suspended, Mm. and he gets out of jail and he's got nowhere to live anymore and he's got no job anymore and he's rendered right on the street because he was already hanging on by a thread anyways, for instance. Mm. Mm. And one little jail stint for something very minor, you know, it is what it is, it's minor. His life is over as he knows it. He's literally holding a sign in one of those medians you drove by. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. So is, is this something that you think you c- will be sustainable even if, you know, it's, as the job market uh, does increase for your business? You're, I mean, are you still going to take time out of your, your week as you get busier? Is that going to be well, a conflict? That's a fair question. Yeah. It right. is going to be a conflict, and it's going to have to be a decision that I have to make and do. So any help I can get, although I like doing this, so – I kind of tend to be the type that likes to do everything myself. Right. Um, so I'll do that as long as I can and, and allocate the time. I'm lucky enough to have jobs or businesses that are flexible. Mm-hmm. I'm up at 4.30 in the morning taking people to the airport. So right. this won't interfere with that. Web work that I do and things online and my podcast, I can do that at midnight. It, you know what I mean? Sure. So I can allocate different ways. I just got to get out there at least once a day mm. and allocate this food to these folks, whether mm. it's around lunchtime. I tend to be out there somewhere between noon and three. Right. And um, I, I haven't even gone to camps yet. I mean, I'm not even to the point where I can go to a camp and because and I, I can get rid of it all of it in one pop there. Right. There are camps and there's loners. And I mm. ask them all this. Are you part of a group? Are you part of whatever? Most of the people I've given to are not. And I am literally just driving like anyone else would do. And as soon as I see what I think is, I'll U-turn, I'll circle, I'll do whatever. And I'll say to them, hey, are you on the streets? Or, Mm. you know, hey, buddy, or whatever. And uh, a couple times I was wrong, you know, not to be insulting, but (laughs) the guy had a backpack and maybe a bike. And he looked like he. a lot of these homeless look the same way. They Mm. they got their stuff on them. Their life is Mm. on their back. And um, it's it's, it's not hard to spot. And the moment I say I got food, because then some of them will say, well, why do you want to know that? And uh, I have food for you. And mm. it's like, whoa, all right, here we go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and they pop up. And all of them have shared. One person, mm-hmm. young man, got the food, and he didn't want to go on camera and share. And sure. I said, no problem. You know, there's plenty of interviews. And Well, you got you to gotta admit, you know, it, it can't be the proudest moment of their life to be in this and predicament. And I understand that. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And that's why there's no pressure or it's not. <clears throat> I don't dangle the food for video. Um, but most of these people want to tell me something and what i am starting to learn and everyone should also listen and take heed of this as well there is no resources for homeless in this county and a couple of these probably four of these folks have made a point of telling me that Mm. there's no transitional phase for people whether they've gotten clean gotten out of jail this and that so that's one problem kind of like that halfway house thing right but for just homeless in general for whatever reason there's very little resources here and i understand why we're a smaller community Mm -hmm. and there's there's no one's excited to put money into that however here's what people have to understand part of why i'm doing this is the homeless numbers are growing everybody if you drive around here Mm. are starting to see more sign holders Mm -hmm. everywhere 95 192 by best buy they're always at that spot they're in the grass over there and then they're hidden they're in the woods where you don't know where they are Mm. there's a ton more than you think Mm. a ton more it's a subculture right okay so because it's hidden you have no idea presto magic it's gone Mm -hmm. okay so there's no resources it's going to continue to grow why Florida continues to grow, third biggest population in the United States. Mm -hmm. Brevard County continues to grow, in my opinion, to the point of 
not even totally sustaining its growth. Mm. It's growing faster, perhaps, than what it can even hold on to at this point. Everybody sees that with the traffic at this point right mm. now. Okay, so you're going to have more homeless. So something has to start getting figured out. And if anyone wants to have a conversation with me about that, I have ideas and a platform that could help these people, mm. even in a private way, mm. of, of dealing so, with that. So perhaps I mean, a, no, a next step would be a call to action, not just for donations of food and resources, but maybe as a volunteer so to, to go out there because, you know, it, it, it does take an army, you know, to, to get mm. to all the mouths. I mean, it's a big county, you mm. know, a, a really long county, in fact. And so maybe even having eventually to where you have, you know, chapters, you know, uh, great. yeah, in, in, in different communities. Yeah, I can't get to Titusville. I mean, you're, that's a great point you're making. Mm -hmm. At this point, I'm really just in the heart of Melbourne. I'm right. in like down by downtown Melbourne. So, you know, Melbourne's like our little crown city of the county or the center city. And so, and that's where I tend to, I live in this area right. close by. But you're right, I'm, I'm neglecting Beachside at this point. And it's not as prevalent, don't get me wrong, no. but you're right, there are areas being neglected. And you made a point uh, when, when we were, we've been mentioning this since you had the idea and you've been going out like, Jesse, you wouldn't believe what I'm doing. And I thought, well, that's pretty incredible. You know, again, in, in what was your motivation? And I'm glad we, we, we got through all of that. But one of the things you, you mentioned was, like, because of this COVID-19, the Daily Bread and some other resources are, n are no longer serving the is that correct well, they're no it, longer able uh, to serve hours are different how it's gone about is different so mm -hmm. yeah any of the um a lot of these folks on the street are telling me or explaining to me that um some of these options are, are a lot more limited right now and probably getting less donations well, as well. well yeah and i and i've i've heard that as well as far as the donations just in the other job that i that i do um they rely on donations because mm -hmm. i work with um some companies that work for seniors so right. they they do the meals on wheels that type of things they are desperate for donations in order even mm. to do meals on wheels for seniors yeah. so that's kind of what's happening people they're they've lost their jobs mm. so they're not donating mm -hmm. so nonprofits are going way down and yeah. just getting the ability to do some of those things has been really hard I mean this has this has only been going on really technically for what a month and a half two months at right. this point um, but it's it's been hard so yeah yeah so you have to think it's a trickle down effect oh well well yeah. well listen guys we're at the uh, about the halfway point yeah. um, at this at this time we're just gonna take a quick uh, break when we come back we're gonna have uh, Darlene segment and, mm -hmm. uh, and you have some fun things to share go for it I do I'm just I'm gonna like relay the rules I don't know can anybody see this basket it doesn't look like you can actually want to move it and yeah well, Jesse can seen? you like doing oh, okay yeah yeah all right yeah because I didn't know if anybody could see the basket it's not fun if you can't see it so these are the rules for this basket giveaway it's our Cinco de Mayo Cinco de Stinko basket so the rules to win for a chance to win I want to be really clear <laughs> is uh, you have to like uh, Space Coast Eats Facebook page E drink play Brevard Facebook page if you don't already you just have to like it you don't if you already like it perfect you're already in you got one up on us and then um, listen to my segment, and all you have to do is on this live podcast, comment yes. on what your favorite thing is, and then um, we'll let you know if you won. It's just going to kind of be random. This is just for fun, and I can deliver it, you know, with spacing in mind or what <laughs> have you. So those are those are the rules. A, a drive-by drop-off. We can do a drive. I can throw it out the window. Uh, Darlene, um, real quick before we go to break, yeah. uh, do. Is it only just for the live viewers, or if they watch this um, live stream uh, as a replay, can they still participate? Well, I put it on for just live viewers. So okay, I think so that's live only viewers. Fair, only so fair. So act, act now, guys. Share yeah. the stream if you want. You know your friends uh, to have a better chance to win. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. More to come right after these brief messages. Listening to Space Coast Podcast, home of the greatest podcasts on the Space Coast. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor or having your own show, email us at Space Coast Podcast at hotmail.com. Space Coast Podcast. Talk hard. Join us for the fresh, new, for your best self podcast with Drs. Anita Saluja and Rebecca Novo of Dermatology Plus Plastic Surgery. We will reveal the facts about techniques, trends, products, and procedures to be your best self. 
the first and only podcast combining the synergy of aesthetic dermatology plus plastic surgery. Search For Your Best Self on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Are you in the market for a new home? Perhaps you need to sell your old home and downsize or relocate. Hey there, my name is Jesse Hall with eXp Realty, and I offer professional real estate services right here on the Space Coast. Give me a call, 321-877-8737 for all of your real estate needs. Again, 321-877-8737 for all of your real estate needs. Buy, sell, invest with the best. Find out more at 321-BuySellInvest.com. And welcome back to the Delicious Podcast. This is Space Coast Eats on another beautiful Thursday evening. Welcome, welcome. So if you've uh, adjust, just... Adjust, 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 what? There. Oh, yeah. Let me, me in let, that frame let, let, me, let me adjust Hi. that mic. There we go. Or that, that camera Let's here. Talk. I know. Well, there's a lot of moving parts here with a live stream podcast. And uh, yes. we love to do the behind the scenes because we get interact with all of our friends here on Facebook. You guys could uh, uh, comment and, and ask questions here. Uh, live for the ultimate uh, product, which is uh, later the recorded audio of the podcast, which, again, people can subscribe to at Apple Podcasts and Spotify and iHeart and Pandora, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So just pick your favorite, give us a follow, and you won't miss another episode mm -hmm. of Space Coast Eats and all the other great programming here at Space Coast Podcast Network. All right, so let me cue some happy tunes. <laughs> And it's Thursday, which means another segment of this week's Eats with Darlene. All right. Hello, everyone. So I do want to just comment. I see that Jane has mentioned a margarita jalapeno cucumber oh. margarita. My fave. <laughs> I know it's her fave, too, because I actually know Jane. So, actually, we've made those for her. So, that's why she likes them so much, because they are amazing. Actually, Sounds amazing. Yeah. Actually, it's a recipe from Epcot. It's the um, one from the Mexican Pavilion. Yes. And that, and that cantina is yes. so cool. What a great menu yes. of margaritas. Oh. They, are, they are work. But yeah. they are work worth it. I Actually, I don't make them, so yeah. I don't know. Why. I, I need, I they need. are work. Never made one. I never made one. I just drink them. So. Houses are hard to build. Mm. Never built one. <laughs> yes. But but I need I need the governor to open up Epcot. Yes. E even if it's just, just the food parts. Just, like, oh, just open up the round the world, please. I'm totally down with it. I think they should just have, oh, the pass holders. I'm a pass holder, so Me I'm too. down with that. Just pass holders. Just pass holders. I think yeah. Disney's very scared to open because they yeah. are they well, they got too much to lose. So Absolutely. there's talk that they may not open for the rest of the year. Yeah. That's which I, seems that's crazy. That's unlikely. That's but so unlikely. Now that yeah. we're opening up like we are, yeah. They, yeah. I, they, listen, they're losing a lot of money. They want to open. Yeah. Well, I, e well, even if it's for AP, you know, annual pass holders, right? Even if it's just for locals or Florida residents, how great would that e be? A even if it's shrunk down, yeah. even if it's just for that. Americans. Yeah. That's really a great. Even yeah. if it's just for Americans, yeah. I mean, oh, you all don't come into our I Disney. Mean, not not this, not no, to but. sound nationalist, but you know, but <laughs> but you know, because we don't want people coming from all over that's the world okay. from right. into of Orlando, course. right? No, yeah. well. That's probably going to happen anyways, but it's an American only. Yeah. I don't, I don't know American. if we'll have the cast members doing the. I mean, I don't think that's going to be happening. No, That'll probably be, not. Yeah. But just, just enjoy the ride. Di distance, you know, the distance pictures. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you know maybe, maybe they'll get rid of cast members altogether. It's everything's going to be automated. Like, get your picture um, with automated right? Nikki. Yeah, the animation in the background. Yeah. Yeah. But that's oh, an well. interesting point. A soft opening. Yeah. You know how much Floridians would appreciate that? A word to whoever's listening if you're affiliated yeah. with Disney. Right. Jesse stumbled across a great idea. Soft <laughs> open, mm -hmm. just just instinct. Floridian residents only for two weeks, three weeks, however long you got to do it. The lines will be shorter. Can do, you imagine do, how many do, people do, will show up? Do it for like just two days. Oh, I'm even down that, with that. Like, that yeah. would be amazing. It would be amazing. Make it, it really happen. Would. Make it happen. A soft, 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 super soft, super soft, angel soft. <laughs> Disney opening oh, Florida only. 
<laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Right, toilet, so that, toilet, so toilet paper on the brain. So, so how, 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 did, how did we get away from your segment? I have no I idea. It, just it went off the tracks. All off right. the, it was Jane. It's all Jane's Every, fault. Everyone, back to uh, Darlene for this week's Eats. Yes. So do you, you going to pop those pictures up? Yep. All right. So we'll talk about a few different things. And remember, mention your in your comments for a chance to win this amazing basket, which you can't see anymore. But it, uh, So I'll mention what's in the basket really quick. We have hot tamales, the actual candy, not actual hot tamales. Some salsa, some Tostitos. We have some Jose Cuervo tequila, the mix. We have some straws, some margarita glasses, and your little cute little container to go do your little um, – Cinco yeah. de Mayo party. Um, this is all the giveaway. All you have to do is like Space Coast Eats Facebook page, Eat, Drink, Play, Brevard's Facebook page. And if you've already liked it, kudos, you're already done there. And then pick which of these things is your favorite for a chance to win. And then this can be delivered or you can pick it up or whatever. We'll figure that out later. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things this week. So I uh, headed out and picked up some muffins at a place I'd never been before. Uh, Blueberry Muffin is the name of the place, the Blueberry Muffin. They were, I thought they were amazing. In, in the Atlantic? You've never yeah. been? No, I know. Did you get, th th by judging by the picture, you didn't get them grilled. When they, when they, they, they cut them in half, put yeah. butter on each side, put, put the butter side down, and it's the most delicious i don't know that they're offering that N well not yeah, right well, now yeah their dining yeah. room really isn't open for it's, that. yeah they but i will tell you they were hot they were warm right out of the oven well, she told me they were perfect yeah yeah so i got um the the uh let me see the blueberry and then in all honesty the other one was my favorite and it was like the cinnamon crunch it was just oh my gosh it was really really good uh, but i got those and put them in the freezer i put some of them out and then they got eaten and then put them in the freezer pull them out and they taste just like they did when i got them at the store mm. i mean at the restaurant they right. were they were absolutely incredible and who's that dog in the photo that's macy so i like to put her in some of my photos she's just too cute so yes. yeah so I, I just shared that picture on my instagram i think i actually shared it on my facebook as well so yeah so sitting outside drinking your coffee you know with your dog you know who will eventually get some of it because she's a beggar mm -hmm. and then I actually you know we talked last week about making cocktails right. that I haven't been making them so I actually had a friend that was at our house and she said oh this would make a great cocktail she had some fresh watermelon and I said okay let me know how it's and I watched her make it so now I have the recipe so I can make it and I shared this on my Instagram as well and it's made with muddled watermelon it's made with tequila tequila yes because it's a watermelon mm -hmm. uh Margarita? Margarita, oh. yes. And then cu Cutro and... Quattro. Um, Quattro. 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 Yes. French. And then like a splash of lemon oui, oui. juice. Mm -hmm. And then just fresh lemon or lime. Fresh lime. Sorry, I apologize. You shake it and boom, you're done. It was absolutely delicious. So refreshing. I think it's perfect for summer. And then what was the other picture that I had up there? You took it down. I'm trying to remember what I sent you. It's, it's coming up. Okay. Hold on, stand by, everybody. I know it's terrible, right? Well, you know, it's it's it's, it's a lot of moving parts. Oh. Here we go. Oh, so oh my gosh, I cannot believe I forgot that. Uh, so this is just another drink. I apparently drank a lot this week. This is non-alcoholic, but I talked about huh. Sassy Granny's, which was opening in downtown Melbourne, right next to Crush Eleven, and she did open. She just now has uh, just sandwiches for lunch. Uh, she's so adorable, but right now she's just doing the sandwiches and smoothies so this is a kale spinach smoothie and it's got also bananas and all kinds of different things in it and i believe it has ginger but it was absolutely delicious uh, and it's adorable there's a lot of really cute um, art that was done by her daughter inside she painted it but she was over beachside as well yeah and that's uh just behind uh longboard house there on sixth Okay, I don't Six know. If she, south, I'm, right? I'm not sure if she's still there. If she's oh, got she's not two, there. I don't know if she has two locations or if she just moved from there to downtown. She oh. could be. I don't know. Oh, I'm not going to quote you on that. You mentioned Beachside. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's cool. listen. You know, I, I've I've seen uh, La Crepe start there as well. That that same location across from Wendy's in the Atlantic, mm -hmm. and uh, they're downtown and and they're, they've been successful. 
Uh, so, you know, so maybe that's just the trend, you know, you yeah. start, you start in a window, you know, with window service and then you move downtown. Yeah. Uh, again, you gotta be successful too. Uh, coming in from some of the comments here is, uh, Vinny Marino of the Vinny Marino podcast saying, uh, County Commission voted to open beach parking tomorrow and other things. Hello. Yeah. So it looks like we're, 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 we, we did, we did what we were asked for, right? Mm -hmm. It's been about five, almost six weeks of being isolated inside are trying to again shelter in place as suggested so we did our job right yes. and hopefully we don't s reveal a, a big spike in uh, transmissions we uh, won't you know and if all goes well then hopefully we could get back to normal before the next holiday like uh you know mother's day father's day and uh and memorial day and july 4th and all the other summer events coming up um and hopefully it's Kids can go back to school in the fall, and NFL football can continue on time, and who knows what else. You know, we're, we're, we're hoping for the best, uh, but certainly, you know, w with safety in mind, I think there's just going to be extra precaution is what it's going to come down to. You know, there's going right. to be a lot more washing of hands. There's going to be a lot uh, more of, uh, you know, being considerate, using, you know, uh, gloves and preparation of food and, and maybe even service of food. Uh, you know, there's just going to be those things. The, the people who are, are, are especially cautious, you know, again, maybe these restaurants will continue to do their curbside service to accommodate for those that rather not dine in and, mm -hmm. and share the space with other people. So, yeah, I think you're going to see a segment of society that's going to shy away from that. They did some polling and showed that 70%, I think that's a little high, but right. a large amount of people, even when things are going to get lifted are going to be a little apprehensive at first mm -hmm. and it'll work its way in and it'll probably work its way in as we move from 25 to 50 to normalcy. Right. Um, I think there will be a spike or whatever you call it. Um, keep in mind, we Brevard County is not a trouble area, folks. Um, South Florida is where the trouble was, and Governor DeSantis got on the air two days ago when he met with President Trump, and he said Orlando, the city of Orlando, which is very metropolis like Miami or Fort Lauderdale, had 50 COVID hospitalizations. Make, make yourself aware of how few that really is in that big city. And he went on record. This is not me saying this. This is a fact. He went on record and said that these COVID cases are from South Florida. Mm -hmm. A good proportion of them were Super Bowl related and New York traveler related. Oh. New Yorkers um, uh, have a big foothold throughout Florida in right. general. But in South Florida, you know that from living down there. Oh, yeah. So New Yorkers, a lot, a lot of travel. New York is the hotbed. No surprise that New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, all those states who have people that commute to New York for work are four of the top 10 COVID states mm -hmm. in the whole pandemic. Yeah, we used to call uh, Bell Harbor down there, Little Manhattan. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was a big portion. Brevard mm -hmm. County, very. we did very good. And if, if I can at least say... Governor DeSantis, I think he did an incredible job. We stayed open as long as we could. He, he, he closed when he had to, this and that. Keep in mind, folks, I monitored this the entire time. We are the third highest population in the country. We are 10th in deaths. To mm. me, that's a victory. 10th in deaths. Nine states ahead of us were third in population with a lot of farm people, cruises, airline travel, it's all coming here. Seniors. I think we did a, a ton of yeah. seniors that could have passed away. They keep seeing us all seniors. Tip your hat to whoever you want. We did a very good job in this state. Tenth in deaths. You can look it up right now. It's always held at that number. Third biggest population. Yeah. No, I think it's been, uh, for what it's worth, you know, it's never successful to, to, to admit that, you know, anybody's died during flu season. But no nope. car accidents. But either. let's admit, you know, at flu season, there's always, uh, you mm -hmm. know, some casualties. Like, you know, I don't think we've had a non-casualty flu season ever. I mean, it's just, it's, it's it, is, it is what it is. It, you know, yes. I mean, it's, um, it's lethal, lethal to some at certain times. You could have survived 20 years of a flu, had it every single year, but that 21st year, that may not be your year. You know, Absolutely. It's, you know so it's, all, it's one of those things where, um, you know, again, you get hit by a bus, you get the flu bug, you, you know, there's a, a lot of ways to, uh, you know, not to turn, turn morbid or anything. Come on, let's not do that. But honestly, there's a lot of ways to go out. So um, if it's the flu and that's, that's you know, how, how, how it has to, to end. And, you know. and, and the silver lining to get off right. the morbidity. Our numbers is why we are able to be pretty much the first wave of states to open and get back to normal. I think a few states started before us, Texas being one of them, but we're definitely in the second tier of states mm -hmm. in the United States right. to start to open up, and that's because of our numbers. So there's a silver lining. A good job was done, right. and here we are trying to get back to normal. New York is not doing this. Right. California is not doing this. Washington State's not doing this. A lot of people are still going to be 
locked down for a yeah, while. Shelter in place yes. for, mm -hmm. for the unforeseeable future and uh you know and we're talking like mental health and and you know uh economic woes you know, i mean we'd hate to see more homeless uh, have to need, need to get fed but you know the, the more we're out of people are out of work and especially those you know um those uh those singles uh you know the people who uh work in the, the restaurant industries and and maybe they have a couple roommates or if they if they can't move back in with the parents or anything else and they're out on their own and they're used to a tipped wage you know, we don't want these people to become part of that that statistic of, of homelessness that is a result of you know an economic shutdown. So, it it's it there's no easy answer, and there's no correct answer. Right. It's just we're just trying our best, and uh, you know there, there's there's always going to be some somebody upset that we open too soon, and there's going to be people that are upset that we, we, we you know shut down at all. Right. And you know, so trying to find that middle ground, especially as a leader, as a politician. Um, who really didn't study, you know, um, uh, pandemic situations. You know, this is all brand new to a lot of people. And uh, from, for, for a lot of them, uh, th you know, they're, 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 it's not, a, I mean, I guess game, but, yeah, they're trying to hypothesize. I mean, it's an educated guess as, as to w what will work and what doesn't they're work. They're winging it. They're winging it, yeah, they're winging it. because there's no, there's no set rule. So we're, we're, we're taking right. a lot as far as this as well. So if there is a, a second or third or even fourth time, then we'll, we'll, we'll just grow and we'll get better and better at it. And uh, Can you know, I mention something that you mentioned? It. So you talked about how this could increase homelessness, and it has. Right. Um, I've never been an advocate for the homeless. I want to make it clear. Right. Um, I, it's, I, now, I've lived in big cities my whole life. I've been privy to panhandling and homelessness, having lived in New York City right. and lived in South Florida. So um, I've always seen this since I'm, I'm young. Um, what's happened with COVID is similar to anybody – that if you're out of work, whether it, you went to jail, whether you had a problem, mm -hmm. whatever happened to you, or you got furloughed, or the company closed or sold or whatever, if you're out of work, that is a possible risk that you now run the risk of homelessness once mm -hmm. you cannot pay your bills. Okay, right. that's just, that's like science. Right. Okay. <laughs> and what's happened is, is what I think a lot of Americans don't understand is the percentage of the population that is one paycheck or two paychecks away from that sort of scenario. Right. So. The only thing that saves that is you have family that can take you in. Right. Somebody else takes you in, what have you. But that's not an option for everybody. So one of the things that I ran into, and Darlene touched on this earlier, is the drug factor and the mental health factor. And I noticed a right. tremendous amount of that. So COVID could put somebody out on the street. What keeps them on the street? And um, Vinny Marino, and he's got some more information, Yes. Uh, by the way, um, which is pretty cool. See, our sheriff put opening progress, so this is all cool. But Vinny mentioned something earlier about, um, or Vincent, uh, about some of these people want to be out there and this and that, and he's he's half right. Um, this is a, so a society it becomes. I have bumped into homeless. First of all, there are panhandlers that make $200 a day. Mm. Let that sink in. There are right. panhandlers <laughs> making that much money. There are also people that get social security money mm -hmm. for injuries, crazy, military, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And but they can't get their life together. It may still be a drug problem or maybe I just don't know how to pay bills. I just mm -hmm. can't get it together. Right. And they choose to be on the street. I've seen people with wads of money, not in this go around, but in my lifetime. Right. There are people that are voluntarily out there. Darlene shared a personal story of someone that she knew with this issue. And there's no doubt, even with young people, why are there so many in Hollywood and in Miami and this and that? So it, it's, it becomes a subculture, mm -hmm. and that is always going to be a part of it. Right. But then there's also some that they've been out there for three weeks. They're not interested in the culture. They have no friends out there. They're not in a camp. They mm -hmm. just got screwed, right. and this is where they're at right now. So it's a rainbow of it. Right. Yes, a lot of drugs. Imagine that you need drugs to cope. <laughs> You know what I mean? Sadly, I mean, these people, they want to be, they're out of their minds, which is a cycle of never being in their minds to get better. Right. Um, so, and then the mental health is a huge one. Right. People that have serious mental health issues, there are some people that can cope, some can't. Right. Some people can hold a job, some can't. Some people can pay bills, some can't. Whatever it is, they can't make it work. So it's a rainbow of what's out there. And yeah. um, I'm just trying to help what is out there i don't know the back well it's it's a, it's a primary necessity you know i mean they, they're probably not going to get medical care they're not going to you know probably they'll probably be turned away from most hospitals or clinics but the most uh they have i've been told that yeah the fu most fundamental things that they need are of course is food and some At shelter clothing yes. so you know anytime we could help them with those three items 
you know, we're ser- we're serving you know mankind. You can't fix everybody's problems. One of the things Vinny mentioned, and there's a theory, is well, it's like if you feed a cat, well, the cats are never going to leave because you keep feeding them. That's half true when it's a cat, right, or a dog. That's a primitive mind doing that. Of course, they're hunter gatherers. Of course, if they're stuck outside, these folks they're not just sticking around because there's food around. Sure, they're stuck. So whether they're going to eat or not, they're still going to be out there. Right. So there, it's not the the population is not going to decrease because stop handing out food and it'll all of a sudden go away. <laughs> it's not. Right. It's not going to. It's just not going to happen that way. Right. Unfortunately, I wish it did. Um, but at the end of the day, so like you said, they're going to be out there anyways. The larger your population gets, the more likely you are to have homeless, mm. and the more homeless you have, the more you have to deal with the problem because. You don't want right. these folks just everywhere. You know, it's still a city that wants to be beautiful and nice. And no city wants homeless all around it. Of you course. Know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we're glad that uh, that you're you're being able to provide, and it looks like a creative way. It looks like mm-hmm. a way that, uh, again, de- de- decreases the amount of waste because there's so much waste. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we're we're here for, through all of this. You know, a lot of su- supply chains because of the shutdown with uh, farmers markets and other things. You know, there's there's local people that uh, have to destroy their food. There's farmers that are destroying uh, meat and, and eggs, yeah. you know, and so, because there's no, there's nowhere for them to go, you know, I mean, nobody's ordering food because the restaurants are closed. That's happening. Right, right. so, right so right. Large level. food is being destroyed in the industrial, like dumpster size, like trailer, uh, you know, tra- truck, truck uh, trailers, um, you know, the, just, that would normally be filled with like frozen pallets of food mm-hmm. uh, now have nowhere to go. There's mm-hmm. nowhere to deliver right. to. So, yeah, there's mass waste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huge the production waste. hasn't changed, right. mm-hmm. so it's got nowhere to go. It's it's overflowing, and it's overflowing. we got to get rid of this stuff. It keeps reducing, right. and you're right. And, uh, and, yeah. and it should go to, to hungry mouths. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, this has interrupted mm. so many different things. I think this whole supply chain between the restaurants, between grocery stores, people don't even really realize the trickle down effect of all of it it's just it's really astounding unless you really look at the big picture of it right. you know it's in, it's affected our environment even um, one thing that we've noticed um, is we've got massive black crows which we've never mm. had mm. just in the really? last month and they're eating all the baby squirrels oh um, but we were talking squirrels. to our neighbor and he said that um, he was talking to I, I don't know he was talking to someone about mm. the the bird issues and it's because the restaurants don't have the dumpsters oh full curious. of food so the blackbirds the crows that mm. usually feed off the dumpsters imagine that from the mcdonald's their food supply chain right is <laughs> depleted so they're looking elsewhere right so it's so we've noticed that too so Lots. there's it's it's affecting the environment please open so you can save these squirrels yes you have no <laughs> idea mcdonald's please <laughs> fill you have no idea this, the, dis- it makes the perfect stress sense. well yes. M- mcdonald's has never hasn't closed the, well the, the, any the, other dumpster right no but the but, du- the, but you have to imagine volume. yes yes. Yeah. yes because people yes. are not in there they're not doing the volume that they would typically do so there's not people throwing their stuff Isn't it in funny the trash how cans it just works itself that way it's like well we got no it, that we have no food now. We got to right. go and hunt for something. It used to be easy. Right. This was a giant supermarket of free dumpster food. Right. Now we got to go and and get this baby squirrel, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a shame, but it's yes. It's almost like um, it's survival of the fittest or yes. Darwin, whatever. Like adapt adaptation. Right. Mm-hmm. We learned that like in what first grade, second grade in your books, like adaptation. It's like, well, when, well, when am I going to need to know this? Well, you, kn- you needed to know it for today. Right. <laughs> You're right. so funny. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention before, I know we're getting close to signing yes, off before yes. I forget because that could totally happen. Um, one thing that is happening here in town is that the mansion is doing, in, in conjunction, I believe, with Tito, so don't quote me on it. Um, they're doing, it's called Foods with Friends on Thursday, May 7th. And what they're doing is they are feeding um, – a meal to service industry and anyone out of work that would like a meal. So uh, get in contact. Nice. Yes, isn't that nice? That is very nice, yeah. Yes, um, and so basically what they say is, you know, as long as we're apart, um, we're in this together. Mm-hmm. I like that, I like that a lot. So get in contact, um, I guess, with uh, the mansion for more details. But if you're out of work, you need, you need a meal, um, or if you're in the food industry, uh, definitely get in contact with the mansion, but that's in conjunction with Tito. So yeah, no, that's that's perfect. Um, and and again, thank you to to all of those 
uh, in the community that have helped out. Uh, you know, again, it seems like the last few shows, because of mm -hmm. this, we've, we've been learning about some of these resources for right. uh, uh, restaurant uh, workers and now, you know, some of the homeless because of, of you know, all the surplus of food. Right. When the schools are out, there's still plenty of food that needs to, you know, it's going to spoil. Yeah. So, and, uh, and of course, there's plenty of kids that depend on that. Even at home, they depend on that school food. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's. And it's, it's widely given to them. And it's, and it's. Mm -hmm. But they're but not claiming yeah. it. But it's revealing. Yes. About how many people depend on different sources of food and how food kind of gets exchanged in different ways. It's just been right. fascinating how it gets, um, th you know, th there's just such an economy when mm -hmm. it comes to food. You know, there's there's the, you know, the, the the first user, I guess, would be in the, you know, the, the, the restaurant as patrons. And then there's a, a secondary uh, a food, you know, I know uh, working in a restaurant, you know, some of the, the, the leftovers or other things that the, the cooks didn't want to throw away. You could kind of take away, you know, um, or eat as a, as a staff member, you know, and I, I got fed pretty well. Um, and, you know, right. especially in, in your 20s when, <laughs> when you're not a good cook and, and your, your uh, refrigerator is always bare. Mm -hmm. uh, if it wasn't for working in restaurants, I'd pro I probably would have starved. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 I had leaned on, but, you know, but that's two economies. Right. You know, the, 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 the customer and then the employees. And then from there, there could be, you know, an, again, outreach mm -hmm. to, to maybe get to the less fortunate. And uh, but it's it's when when things are disrupted, seeing how food now is accumulating in some areas, being depleted in some areas and that whole system gets off whack. Mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing the results and it's, it's quite fascinating. Yeah. Can I mention somebody? Please. You had something about the elementary schools with the food and it, this is important. Um, one of the reasons I also did this is I got to get intimately involved with Keith G. And Keith G., the exact name, I want to make sure I got it right, was right. it's the Children's Hunger Project, and they're out of Cocoa, and they do an amazing job of yes, supplying food to the elementary school children, and they make sure that they get meals not for from school because it's totally private. They get meals to go home with on Friday to get them to the weekend, so it's guaranteeing them food if their family can't afford to or doesn't feed them, and it's amazing. And all the food is donated on a lo large level, and he's got an amazing operation in Coco. So anybody should definitely look up Keith G and the Children's Hunger Project. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I'm bringing it up is he gave me a list of the elementary schools in the area mm -hmm. and the percentage of children that qualifies. This isn't even homeless people, folks. Right. This is the amount of children in Brevard County that from the government qualify for free or reduced lunch. Right. The numbers were staggering. And if I told you how many elementary schools were at 80% or higher, your jaw would hit the floor. Okay? Oh, that's sad. And it's, it's nuts. And again, it, they have to qualify. Right. They're all qualifying. So right. it's telling you what the numbers really, really are. Mm -hmm. You know, we have affluent parts of the county. We have some not so affluent parts of the county. And then there's poor parts. Everybody knows where these are. But at the end of the day, I, was, I couldn't believe the numbers. So one elementary mm -hmm. school, I'm not going to say whatever, was like 100%, yeah. 99%. So it, it's, it's very high. And these aren't homeless people, these for the most part. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of them aren't. The kids still got to go to school, right? But at the end of the day, a good portion, and you, and to qualify for that, I mean, you got you right. to have low income yeah. for free lunch or free breakfast. Well, we, we appreciate your, your input, Josh. Uh, thanks for everything you're doing. Here you are, ladies Thank and you. gentlemen. Uh, the fat angel uh, feeding hey. a homeless person near you. <laughs> uh, how you do can they see that, right? Ro ro that real I quick, am. 30 seconds. How do they get in touch with you if they want to donate or oh, volunteer? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So social media. Um, I have a podcast as well. I'll be showing all of these videos through the podcast. If you're interested in seeing any of these folks, what they have to say, it's the Mr. Josh podcast and uh, my Instagram, Mr. Josh W and uh, Twitter. Same thing and YouTube channel. And I post all this stuff. And so you can find me on any of those platforms. Cool. And then on Facebook as well, uh, Mr. Josh Podcast has a page. So there's, there's ways to get hold of me. And if they can't remember any of that, let them get hold of you guys and you can bring it to me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Donations, anything you want to do, I'm taking it all. Cash, food, anything that can be of value to these folks, toiletries, mm -hmm. what have you. That's why it's the Fat Angels, not just about food. I'm trying to do and cover everything that I can possibly get help with to give any of these folks to just make it a little easier. Perfect. Darlene, any uh, action steps you want the audience uh, to do until next week? All right, so I'm going to extend this. Okay. Because we haven't gotten any takers, which is going to make me like cry in my soup. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so, so we're just going to extend this to anyone that listens to the podcast post tonight mm -hmm. until I'm going to say today's Thursday. I'm going to say until Monday. 
I'm gonna oh, put it Monday five. Well, yeah, Monday yeah. five o'clock. So cut it off. So whoever's listening to this between now and then, but it has to be posted on the Facebook page in the comment section. So get on it. So if you want to share it, so maybe you yeah. can split it with a friend, increase your chances to it's, win. It's, it's, a, it's a great little basket. It's a Thank great you so basket. Much. Yeah, and it's, this va- is it's valued at probably, what, $60? Yeah, and, and, and this, is our first, this is our first attempt at doing it, and we're going yeah. to continue with it, uh, not only from us uh, here at Space Coast Eats, but also from other participating uh, contributors. Uh, so if you're a restaurant and you want to, you know, uh, entice somebody with a with a uh, gift certificate, we could always add that to the basket or anything else. So uh, mm-hmm. we'll get plenty of recognition for you if you do decide to do it. And of course, if you have any ideas for like a Fourth of July or Mother's Day basket, mm-hmm. certainly get in touch with us. And uh, you know, we could just build better and better baskets every every holiday. Uh, but thank you for listening to Space Coast Eats from Darlene and myself. We really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, once again. Uh, like our Space Coast Eats uh, Facebook page and of course our Instagram because we always have fun things going on there. Mm-hmm. Share this share this video uh, with a friend uh, and of course subscribe if you're listening to our podcast on Apple, Spotify or wherever you consume your podcast. Give us a follow. We really appreciate that. And until next week where's your sign off? Until next week have a happy Cinco <laughs> de Mayo or Cinco de Stinko, Thank however Cinco de Stinko. it goes for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time.